am Natalie, and tonight I've brought each of you a Rolex. Not the watches from Switzerland, but the fastest growing street food in Africa. You've had them on your plates. Did you try them? It's also how Musana Karts is going to double the income of a million people. Come with us and we'll show you how. This is my fellow Ugandan, Kiza. And this is what African street vending looks like today. Your Rolex wasn't made on a cart like this, but you're beginning to get a glimpse into some of the issues that Kiza struggles with. He has three major problems. His cart is dirty and unsafe. A lot of people don't feel comfortable eating food from a cart that looks like this. He is unlicensed. Every day, he faces the risk of being evicted from the market or having his goods seized by the authorities. And he only earns $6 a day to support his family of five. We have this problem that we're going to solve. 167 million people suffer from these challenges across sub-Saharan Africa every day. We have the solution. We're going to solve Kiza's problems, and we're going to scale this. Keske, show them how. OK. We are what every street food vendor needs. We take them from surviving to thriving in three ways. One, our carts are clean and safe, encouraging new customers to buy from a Musana cart. Two, we give them a government-approved license which makes them legal and stable. Three, we have solar electricity, which enables the vendors to do two things. To have light, employing people for an evening shift, and to charge phones, adding a new revenue stream. These three innovations more than double the income of street vendors in Kampala. Right, Manon? Yeah. There are 10 Musana carts operating in Kampala as we speak. Each cart employs six vendors, three for the day shift and three for the night shift. Our Musana carts pilot has already tripled the income of 60 licensed street vendors. How is that possible? Now, Kiza is licensed from day one. On a bad day, he sells twice as many Rolexes, doubling his income to $12. On a good day, he sells four times more. For the first time, new customers in Kampala feel safe eating street food. And with access to electricity, Kiza charges up to 30 funds a day, earning an additional $3 per day. His income has more than doubled. Now, on average, Kiza earns a secure $20 per day, as much as a taxi driver in Uganda. And how do we make money? By doing two things, hardware sales and advertising. We sell our carts directly to street vendors at a 25% markup. And with our financing program, they own their carts within one year. Also, we will sell ad space on each cart for over $300 per year. This ad revenue stream will keep us sustainable as we expand. Actually, our expansion has already started. Our vendors are paying us back weekly, and we have received more than 200 orders in only three months. In year one, we will focus in Kampala, where we provide the only food cart licensed by the government of Uganda. In year two, we will expand to the rest of the country and we will be cash flow positive, ready to scale up our Musana Kurt franchise model throughout sub-Saharan Africa. MTN, the largest telecommunication company in Africa, wants access to 10,000 carts by 2019. And we have been invited by the UNDP to provide Musana carts to youth and women in order to reach the gender equality goal of 2020. By 2022, we will have expanded to West Africa, 
generating 45 million dollars profit and reaching 1 million vendors. Musana Kart's expansion will not stop until we put a life-changing tool into the hands of each and every sweet vendors in Africa. We are three friends with a higher calling to give the people of the world tools of empowerment. We are the generation of change, and we have already moved to Uganda. We're already on the road to doubling the income of a million people. Our vendors are already offering the people of Kampala clean food that is made safely, sustainably, and is affordable. We need tonight's $1 million to do three things. Continue to grow our fantastic team on the ground, manufacture our first 1,000 carts, and reach 60,000 vendors within East Africa in the next three years. Our idea is unfolding before our very eyes. We invite you tonight to support Musana and accelerate this change. Bob? So what's to stop the halal boys to get into that market? <laughs> halal guys, I think you mean. <laughs> halal guys. Halal guys. <laughs> so we've designed an ecosystem around this cart. We provide maintenance, financial literacy training, health and sanitation training, and insurance for the first three years that a person owns this cart. We're working with the government to make sure that we meet all the requirements that are necessary and have a financial program to make it inclusive for our vendors. So it's all about the package that Musana brings, not just the cart. I, I noticed that over half of your revenue stream uh, comes from advertising. And what uh, protection are you giving to advertisers to make sure that their ads stay up and are not replaced and maybe resold to other uh, local advertisers? So we maintain a very close relationship with our vendors. Our financing program works through the solar system. Every day they use M-Pesa or mobile money to pay for their $3. They receive a code that unlocks the solar system. This is how we maintain the payment schedule and how we make sure that they do not violate any of the regulations set by the city. And that will also help us make sure that they keep up to what we provide with the advertising. Thank you. So by, by um, um, focusing on empowering a lot of your customers with the licensing and ensuring that safety and hygienic standards are met, are you held liable in the event that something goes wrong? Yeah, it's a great question. And yes, we are. We take that responsibility. What we're trying to be is the gold standard to push and break these barriers across sub-Saharan Africa. We have de facto exclusivity with the government of Uganda because we're the only ones trying to do this. And we want to take that risk. We do have an insurance provider that has our back in case anything goes wrong, but we're happy to take the step for all street vendors in Africa. This seems like a natural approach for a development bank because it's, it's access and your ability to scale. Have you approached any of the development banks either on the World Bank level or within Africa? Mm -hmm. And uh, if so, what was the reaction? So we've spoken to several banks in Uganda and one in Kenya, but we're really hoping to impress a certain someone tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I would think regardless if you win this or not, we ought to find a way to open them up because that was one of the conversations with President Clinton today Absolutely. and some of the large groups. This is a natural extension for a little bit of capital and big risk behind it. Thank you. Thank you. What do you worry about since we're, you know, in the three of you, same question we asked earlier with one of the other groups. What's, what's going to trip you up and how do you prevent it? So the first thing we were concerned about is stability in the region. We're starting in Uganda, which is my hometown, and I have an established network, and we just re-elected our president, so we have five good years. We also decided to get local support. So we work with the vendors and the communities. And in every market, you always find a mother or father figure that people respect and support. So they have been our go-to people to give demo cards, to help us get feedback, to understand what the people want. So regardless of any kind of regime change or government difference and administration, we have to make sure this is what the people want. So 
Where, um, where are you going to get your carts manufactured? And if it's not locally, have you seen any backlash from the local communities about that? It's what we wanted to do. We tried to do that. So the first 10 carts that you saw were all manufactured locally in Uganda. But then the cost becomes too high for our clients. Because Uganda is landlocked, everything gets imported. So we're buying from wholesalers. So we decided to go straight to the source in China. And we've been looking at different manufacturers and now have a designated one with a quotation who understands exactly what we're trying to do and will help us reach economies of scale as we expand to keep the costs as low as possible so that as many vendors as we can are enabled to get these carts. I have a question about the reliability of the solar. Maybe you could talk about the manufacturing process. And so our solar providers are a company called Phoenix International. They're the largest home solar system providers in Uganda. And they import their parts from Germany as well. We have two 17-watt solar panels on each cart with a 40-watt lithium-ion battery that will last eight hours for backup power. We did inquire with the technicians. And as long as there's light, the solar panel will charge. So it's not about the exact sunshine. And being on the equator, Uganda seems a good place to start. Do one more, one more, why one why more do you have to import this cart? It's a basic cart. Why can't this be made in Uganda? It's the steel. It's so expensive. We went to so many different workshops. We really, really wanted to do that. But if we import the parts, we can still assemble them in Uganda at least. Great. Thank Give you. it up for Musana Cards from Holt International Business School.